Hello, 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 and welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back to the Mission Accepted podcast. You know we wouldn't be here without you. And you know how I know you're there? Because I hear from you all the time. You guys are the best podcast audience ever. And you're like, I know, Deb, we know we're the best. And what are you going to call us today? What are you going to tie into your guest? Come on, you old timers. <laughs> Spice it up. You know what you are? You are mystical. You are the best. You are mystical. You're intuitive. Your gut told you to be here today. You knew there was something that you needed to hear today. You knew you needed to take action today. So sit up and get ready because we have Linda Nardelli, who is an amazing spiritual mentor and counselor. And I actually have had the experience of experiencing Linda's work many years ago. And I have to tell you, I'm going to tell you, you might send newsletters and I do get newsletters, but I have been receiving this woman's newsletter forever. And I'm going to tell you, it is so cool because the, she has these doors in her newsletter and you get to pick the door and then it kind of tells you where you're at. I'm like, you know what? We all, there's some newsletters that we get that we don't read, or we kind of like, we'll get back to it later. We never do. And then you got 20,000 emails and someone, you know, someone <laughs> is just going to tell you to delete them all. But I always take the three minutes, five minutes, four minutes. I, I take it as spiritual food. So you guys know. So anyways, yes, I love this woman. She does incredible work and I'm so happy she was able to be with us today. And also part of this big project that you guys are all hanging out with in the 262, stand up, speak up and show up. And this woman certainly has done that. And one of the things that I love about Linda is that she broke ground a long time ago. You know, I have a big heart for pioneers and uh, we were just talking pre-show about how the world become embodied. You know, we've been starting to get more in touch with our spirituality. We hear, you know, most people talking about meditation, having a relationship with something of that nature. And this woman uh, carved path, right, on this whole philosophy. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to introduce Linda. Linda, thank you so much for coming on to Mission Accepted today. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I'm so happy to be here. I'm me so too. excited. <laughs> I mean, we got visualizing and dreaming, dreaming up and getting all ready for today. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. So you're talking to two Canadian sisters today. Um, sit up and take note. This is amazing. So um, I look, I was just telling everybody how you do spiritual counseling and I know channeling and intuitive healing and you, you lean in on the somatic therapy and there's many different modalities that you do that many people may not have heard about before. And so let's kind of introduce them to you and what you do and maybe share with us, like, how did that start for you? How does someone get a calling or a message or a, cause we talk in mission accepted about sometimes how we end up doing what we're doing. Maybe was painless, maybe was painful, maybe was, so maybe share with us a little bit of what and how, and I guess, let us get to know you a little bit. Well, thank you. Um, I came into counseling in, on its own as a modality in my, I was 29 when I took my training and it was my counselor and my sister and my friends that were saying, you need to be, be a counselor. And in the training, I thought, oh, I'm in my element. However, I'm also a spiritual devotee and I'm an artist. And as an artist, what I do, and I've been doing this for years is to get out of the way and let the art happen, let the art reveal itself to me. And I had no idea that that was in essence developing my channel or developing me into a spirit. And so initially I would just feel the spirit. I always felt spirit. I just felt them in the studio. But it started to happen more through writing, more like I remember I lived in an attic apartment and I remember having a, like thinking there was somebody behind me and I turned around and I, there's nobody behind me. It's like, okay, I, I feel spirit. I'm okay. I, there's some, there's an entity here. And I kept getting pen, paper, pen, paper. Oh, oh you want to write? You want to talk to me? Oh, okay. And what blows me away, it's like when you get a calling, you don't question it. And so I didn't even question it. I just got my journal. Okay, what do you want to say to me? <laughs> and, and it was painstakingly slow initially. And a week later, I'm like, wait, 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 I can't keep up. <laughs> and then we, I used to do work at the time. Mm -hmm. Now I do distance healing, or I work with people more energetically to help them connect with their bodies. But at the time, I worked with people on the massage table, and I remember with this woman. I, I mean, she was used to be 
giving her intuitive insights. But this time I said, oh, there's a spirit that wants to talk to you. Is that okay? And she said, oh, okay, oh, okay. <laughs> and the spirit just spoke through me. I'm like, what? what, what? And it was all natural and normal until she left. <laughs> and I was changing the sheets on the table and I totally freaked out. I'm like, oh my God, what just happened? But, and I ha- I just knew this is going to change my life. But of course, yeah. you know, it's like, I want it to change my life, but I don't want it to change my life. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's amazing. That's an amazing story. And I actually, now that when you talk about um, having that massage table, I remember coming to your place and I'm getting on the massage table, uh, Carisdale area or something, or I heard yeah yeah it was the upper uh yeah, yeah, kids, upper kids area um, oh my gosh. McDonald, yeah. just a few years ago just a few years ago um <laughs> <laughs> um okay so here it is and you're accepting and and it's happening and so take us on a little bit of a journey because what, what i do know of you as artists because i've seen your most incredible art um i've also been participated in group work that you've done um the whole idea mm-hmm. and concept of channeling um, you know, you've written a beautiful book and we had a conversation not too long ago and you were talking about the hu- humanness and spirit, right? Like humanness mm-hmm. and spirit. Can you explain a little bit more? I think that was a great conversation that we had that we were talking about the marriage between human nature and spiritual nature. You know, for, for years, we've been hearing people say that we're spirit having a human experience. And I like to think of it as, yes, we are spirit having a human experience and we are a human being having a spiritual emergence Mm -hmm. or experiencing a spiritual emergence that they're interconnected. And that's important to me because a lot of spiritual circles and teachers, they treat the human nature as if it's the weak link in our spiritual devotion. And to me, it's like, no, it's not. It's, this is our conduit. This is sacred. And that means everything. That means all our emotions, raw or delighted. We've just come, we're coming out of a positivity um, cycle. Where everybody, everybody was thinking you just have to be positive all the time. And there was talk about how anger is a lower vibrational emotion. And I even had a client once spend the first 20 minutes of her session apologizing to me for feeling angry about something. It's like, I know it's not very spiritual of me. It's like, it isn't? Why? Why not? Mm-hmm. It's part of the journey. And what is its message? So I trust that guidance exists in, in our field. It's ex- our field is expansive. There's so much information in the in-between. And if we're making things wrong, we're not available for that guidance. If we're making, if we're saying being human is, oh, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm just human. Like, no, I want to say, isn't it great? Wow, I'm human and I have all these experiences and all these feelings, <laughs> the highs and the lows. I, I, you know, in the world of media, they would say that's a mic drop. Um, I just want to stop and let's just take that one in because I've seen the graphs and we've all had that measurement of energy. Well, maybe not all, but okay. Like I've seen the graphs. I've seen the pictures. I've seen it on social. I've seen it in books. And yes, I've, you know, I've talked to people that have done studies around taking a glass of water and putting beautiful words around it and putting it under a microscope and the atoms and the cells are still vibrant and alive. And then putting words that are not, as beautiful around a glass and taking and you know you'll see Mm -hmm. that the the cells have broken and there's a miscommunication and what that does and i think that that is um legitimate information but i really would i do think and i can see how when someone looks at a graph and they see that there's a vibration whatever that is to that that it's very comparable that it's almost like i'm not supposed to have that because it doesn't vibrate as high and Mm -hmm. we're always supposed to be here because most people want to be in a state of happiness and Uh sure it might have a different uh, level of vibration, but no vibration should be dismissed and no vibration should be uh, categorized as not positive because then it becomes an impossible, a possible life. And then you're judging, you're feeling bad for feeling jealous Uh or envious or ungrateful or, 
mad or angry or whatever it is. I really, that is a big spiritual mic drop or and a big awake. I, I just, wow, just like, it's all important. And I love what you said. What's the message? Like, what's the message in the anger? Like, what yeah. is that? Yeah. And, and what do you, what do you feel like when you, when you imagine, when you just think of suppressing that anger, that hurt, that jealousy, that resentment, that comp or you're comparing yourself to somebody that envy, you know, when you think of suppressing that, just take a moment and notice how, to, how it feels in your body. Mm -hmm. And, and then, you know, and imagine putting all of that in that glass, that's your glass all the, the negative feelings in your glass and now we're just yeah let's write love around that glass let's love that anger and let's cherish that resentment and let's welcome the jealousy it's like wow this this too needs love mm -hmm. and this too is a teacher Right. Because if yeah. you just go to that next step, why am I angry? It's like, oh, well, you know what? It could be something simple as I haven't eaten all day and I didn't self-care or yeah. I didn't run in the game. And you know what? Maybe a meditation might be a good idea because this anger is coming from a place of nowhere. Or you know what? I'm pretty sure I had set my boundary and that's the third time they've crossed it. And now I'm getting an experience of um, disrespect and it's coming up as anger. And what I need to go do is go back and have that conversation and reaffirm my boundaries. Like it can, it can be a master teacher as well. Right. That's exactly it. And you're describing an alert and you're describing your, that emotion is alerting you and it's, and it's hurt, you know, it's sadness, mm -hmm. and even depression. People are, you know, we've become so afraid of depression. And again, our instinct is to make that wrong. Mm -hmm. And to me, well, that's what the channel guidance has taught me is this again, this needs love. This needs to be welcomed. I describe this to my clients. I said, imagine opening the door, actually imagine closing the back door, closing the draft, all the windows. And then we're just going to come to the front door. <laughs> Gonna, we're just going to close all those distractions. They're going to come to the front door. We're going to open the door and consciously welcome all the gremlins, welcome the shadows, welcome the triggers, welcome it all. Because what happens then is something miraculous. Spirit walks in, guidance walks in, the, like you said, the awareness comes in. Wow. And it's interesting because I know everybody, well, people go to find guidance or go inside or seek spiritual counseling and, and for different reasons. And there doesn't have to be one in particular. I know for me, there's been times where I, I, I remember coming to see you because I just didn't know my next step. Like I had come to my own, I can't figure out my stuff and I needed someone to oversee and, and I, and I, and I think no matter for me, no matter how intuitive I am myself, I think it's always good to have someone else do it because we all have some little attachment, right? Like, oh, I'd really like that to happen, oh, but yeah. you know, so, um, it's great to have, uh, someone be able to just oversee and see whenever I was like, something's not right. Or I'm not flowing. Something's not flowing. I, I, mm. I need some cleaning. I need some clearing and I'd much rather go. Mm. But what are some of the things that people do come to you for? Because I know that some of our listeners may have never considered spiritual counseling or never considered intuitive as a form of a resource to uncomfortableness in their life or mm -hmm. difficulties or career mm -hmm. changes or things. These are new concepts for people. So what is it that people come to you for? And just some of the things people have come in the past, maybe. Yeah. Many of the people that come to see me are hungry for more there they have this burning desire to somebody described it so beautifully he he, he wanted to become comfortable with the unknown mm. and it was it took him a while to articulate that but he said i i just I, there's got to be more to reality than what meets the eye than the intellect Mm -hmm. And and oftentimes it's people that are feeling alone, or I say, you know, they, they beat to a different drum. 
and they're looking to find themselves. And there's something amazing that happens with channeling because when spirit communicate through me, they really see the person. They, they, a person, I mean, people have to be ready for that though. They have to be ready because oftentimes people are used to living outside of themselves and they, and being seen can be uncomfortable because it brings us back in, mm. brings us to the body, to the soma. But that's where healing happens. That's where transformation happens. That's where fulfillment happens. We don't find fulfillment chasing after something outside of ourselves. We, we find it externally when it's been propelled from within, when the movement, the experiences come from that inner dimension, the inner longing, the, the, the intimate relationship we develop with ourselves. So, and, and another thing is that many people that see me, in fact, I would say most of my clients are highly sensitive in some way or are hungry, yearning to develop their sensitivity because they know something's missing. Yeah. And when you hear the words coming from someone else, I think there's a sense of, I don't know if the word is contentment, but the word is more some kind of confirmation. It's like, okay, or relief or, oh, or I think that's, that's mm -hmm. where the answer and, com and combining that kind of intuitive work with counseling, with therapy, with somatic therapy, body centered therapy, hypnotherapy, helps people receive the guidance on a deeper level mm -hmm. it helps their bodies remember what's mm -hmm. exciting to me is even less the what information gets channeled through me that's that's less significant to me than those aha moments when 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 people just they their bodies everything they they just receive and there's the light that goes on and like just mm -hmm. just yesterday I had a client the way she was describing things her articulation had improved her her ability to observe and the details and her acknowledging herself for what she was observing rather than putting herself down I'm like, wow so I got to celebrate that that's amazing let's talk a little bit I know that uh, you dealt in we're talking about human nature and spiritual nature and um d diving deep in your book title mystical intimacy mm -hmm. you know it could mean so many things so tell us what it means <laughs> tell us what it means in content tell us what it means like you know what what, what is the concept of this book mystical intimacy it's about the marriage between our spiritual and human nature, our spirit, our soul essence, and our human nature. It's about fostering a relationship with our human nature that is sacred, where we honor who we are. And the book is, it offers channel guidance, but it offers my voice, my storytelling, and my experience of the channel guidance. And this book started years ago in Mass India. Those are the, that's a, a group soul that I channel. Asked me to write a book, <laughs> talk about the calling. Which we'd like to write a book, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Without having a clue what I was getting into. Because they did not give me complete messages. I thought, oh, sure, we'll channel a message and edit it for articulation. We're good. You know, do, like there's so many yeah. channel books. That's how they're done. Okay. What's, okay no big deal but they gave me incomplete messages yeah. I'm like well what do you mean by that and I'd have to keep coming back and then sometimes they'd elaborate and sometimes they'd leave me in utter silence and I get this this niggly feeling oh wait you want me to write about this <laughs> yeah 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 they wanted you to write the book yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're like oh let's write a book okay they want partnership yeah and and my spirit guides your spirit guides the angelic realm our guardian angels they're not looking to be our authority they don't have all the answers because they're not in the body of experience right. so they don't get to say what's right and wrong we get to feel that in our body so that's what this book is about it's about feeling and sensing more and it's it's jam-packed with um spiritual teachings 
on multidimensional reality, probable reality, on principles like forgiveness, faith, abundance, that we've heard about a lot. I just, I'm taking this into kind of the digestible, tangible, you know, think of it as a bioavailable supplement. <laughs> well, <that's... laughs> Perfect. Our brains love that, right? Yeah. You can visualize that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so it's a mar- the, I, I've since my twenties, I've been devoted to being a conduit, mm. and my idea of being conduit was embodying spirit. Um, in everything that I do, which which is to to be with what is wanting to emerge, and I was so lucky to get the kind of counseling training that was it's based on trust oriented therapy which is ba- which is based on spiritual emergence like being with what is trying to emerge in each and every moment so the book has stories and poetry and very creative i don't lack creativity yeah no 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 challenge there no challenge there it pours in um well thank you because you know mystical intimacy can you know, when you read it, you're like, it, it could mean so many things, but really it's intimacy with self, intimacy with self. I love that trust-based therapy where you're trusting what's happening and unfolding. And mm-hmm. I think we need support in that, right? I mean, I think we need support in, in everything that we journey that is encompassing and big and can be engulfing, right? And yeah. that definitely is, that definitely is when you start taking this spiritual path. I think it's important to have someone who's got advice that can can help the, you. the guiding yeah. hand. Yeah. The guiding hand. So many Except. people are trying to do this alone. Mm-hmm. And I've never been able to do it alone. I need my 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 teachers, mentors, my counselor, my colleagues. And because there's one thing, there's a key message in the book. It it gets repeated in every chapter. And Massey D repeats this message in all the, in my private sessions, in the groups that I group work that I do, and it's the, nece- the 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 necessity to develop, to cultivate an intimate relationship with our desire. And that, I see you doing that, Deborah. I see you doing that with your work. I've heard that in your podcast. I think that's where you key in on what people are saying, because you have an intimate relationship with desire, which is which is, um, it's that field of longing. When we take the pining out, we take the want, 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 want out, the need to figure out how we're gonna actualize that out. And we just stay close to this, the sweet longing. Because then that, that brings us back home. It, 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 it's, it, it, and it helps us be in resonance and life can match us in resonance. So it's like I say that like, like the, you know, one of the main desires that so many people have is relationship, the finding the beloved. Ding 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 ding. All day long, all day long, all day long. All day long. <laughs> all day long. <laughs> and when they find it, they'll no, no. Let's let's talk about that. Yeah. When they find it, there's work. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! It's like oh, it doesn't stop there. <laughs> But it, it's true that's a that's a you hear that a lot right i so. hear that a lot and um oftentimes what happens is that people and i've done it too i'm guilty of that too yeah. looking outside of myself i do that in my marriage it's it's like yeah. i abandon myself here and want my partner to give me the love i'm not giving to me mm-hmm. and so oftentimes we, when we're really connected with our longing we could be in that we can watch look at a couple and go oh isn't that beautiful Mm. oh i love the way they're holding hands look at the way they're looking at each other that is so sweet and we start to sip that like "Mm, just beautiful wine beautiful cup of tea we just start to taste it and it tastes good and it feels good until the voice says i don't have that well, that's not how it was in my last relationship. Or well, that's not how it is in my relationship. Well, I can't find that. Mm. And, and then we just cancel out that beautiful moment, that moment we could have savored. Mm. 
we gulped the wine or we let it sit there and you know it's we don't savor that beautiful moment and i i remember at one point i'm in a relationship and sometimes my husband is in work mode and where's the nurturing <laughs> And I remember being in the kitchen and I remember feeling really negative about he's not nurturing and what am I doing here? And I'm like, Linda, what are you longing for? What's your desire? I'm just hearing you complain. What are you desiring? Oh, it'd be so nice if he was affectionate with me right now. Two minutes later, two minutes later, this man comes and puts and I was in the kitchen cooking and he looks, looks over my shoulder. Oh, that smells so good, sweetheart. How it, and we had that moment of intimacy. Mm -hmm. We miss out on those. Mm -hmm. So that's what this book is about. Let's not miss out on this. Let's <laughs> be filled up. Let's, yeah, let's fill up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I want to, I want to um, switch gears a little bit, maybe, who knows where this will go, but <laughs> you said something that really caught my attention when we were pre-show and it was, and I, I wrote it down. I was like, oh my gosh, that, that itself would be a great book title. That itself would be a great poem title that, and we talked about the woman's way coming back to the body. Mm -hmm. And as you're talking right now, I'm not sure if that's what we're talking about right now, coming back <laughs> to the body, but um, that uh, there was just something about the woman's way coming back to the body. Mm. I really yeah well we were talking about that because of the work you're doing with the woman's woman the woman's international as well the your book that's coming up that I'm so yes. excited to be a part of yeah 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 that is going to be amazing and so Sorry. I've been questioning that but it's always with me because we live in a patriarchal system Mm -hmm. And so many people, we, we do a lot the man's way. And it doesn't serve men or women. I mean, it doesn't serve all of us. Mm -hmm. What would serve us all is more an integrative, yin and yang kind of expression. So for me, the woman's way is slower paced. Mm -hmm. It's pausing. Um, it's paying attention to the in-between. And it is more embodied. I find that, that the patriarchal way, the yang way, it's intellectual, it's rational. And, and I have said to my husband from time to time, it's like, I have no interest in a, appealing to your rational mind right now. Because it's, it's not fun, it's work, and it's depleting. Because as women, we don't have as much testosterone energy and all that heavy mental activity really uses that up. Mm. And it's bloody tiring. You have to convince somebody else and have to rationalize, have to explain and defend and justify how we feel. The woman's way is there is no explaining. There's no explanation. There's no justification. We throw that out the window. And we open the door to being heard and to being embodied, which looks something like being able to say to others, when I hear you say that, I notice my chest is tight. I mean, that's a counseling practice, mm -hmm. but it's an embodied practice. Mm -hmm. And one of the key, key, key skills, and I, I teach a lot of skills with people is the art of, of observing, which is to name what is. I don't want to explain to somebody that they're expecting me to justify. I don't want to explain my feelings to them or explain or try to get them to operate differently over there so that I could be comfortable over here. Mm. I'm going to come back into my body. I'm going to be comfortable in my body, whether they get it, whether they're hearing me or not and be transparent with what's going on for me in it which may look like yeah you know what um i don't want to appeal to your rational mind what i'd love right now is for you to hear me with empathy mm. you know i i don't need to change or fix or resolve i don't need an answer i don't 
<laughs> to be rescued. What I need is, can you meet that? And just keep naming. You know, when you speak to me in that tone, you sound really impatient. You don't seem to have, it seems not to be the right time to talk about this. Is this correct? Oh, no, 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 I'm fine. I can hear you. With still the impatient tone. I'm not convinced. And to stay with our body experience, our awareness, our body is informing us. It's telling us. It's telling us all the time that tightness in the chest, that mm, feeling in the belly, the, you know, it's, and when we start to cross our arms and look away, there's so much information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very well, very good. I know that we're coming a little bit to a wrap up and I want to talk about, because you do groups and I want mm -hmm. to talk just almost conceptually about groups because many people have never been in a group. Many people don't know what to expect in a group. Um, it can be nerve wracking to go into mm -hmm. a group. Mm -hmm. um, some people love group because they get to, because they like to, you know, maybe be known. And some people like to be the wallflower. And there's all sorts of dynamics that happen in a group. Oh. Um, and then some people are like, oh, there's going to be four or five, six people that get to hear about me instead of just one person. Can you talk about group concept? Like, you have a group, so maybe you can share with us what goes on there. And, and, and um, you know, if people are drawn to go, then they can find you. But also, <laughs> mm -hmm. sometimes some of the resistance that comes up when someone goes group, someone's like, uh, no, nah, it's not for me. But what, what, you know what I mean? Like, there can be yeah. nervousness. I remember going into groups and going, this is a different level of sharing myself or do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. It's not like I'm going to a class to learn how to, you know, change tires. I'm going into <laughs> something emotional, <laughs> which means that there's me and my intimacy walking into this room and I don't know these people. It can keep people out of the group, yes. world, but it's so powerful, right? Yeah, that's really perceptive. Thank you. That's a really important question. Um, I'm hearing it a lot right now as um, as I've opened up, I, like I mentioned to you earlier, that I've created the Mentorship Circle, which is an ongoing monthly group. And some people say, oh, I'm not a group person. And I, yeah. I or I, I, how, how big is the group? As if, it, you know, as if it, I mean, we just want three or four, you know, or yeah. it's like, well, yeah. And I remember my first counselor invited me into a, a series workshop where there's going to be a group. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. And she called me. Talk about calling. She called me to it. She says, Linda, you need this. This is really going to help you grow in ways that the private sessions, well, it's different, Linda, because there's dynamics that happen in group. And I braved it and I went and it changed my life. It was amazing what I discovered about myself and how I interact with people and the skills I learned on how to interact in ways that were more fluid and more true to me. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that happens is family dynamics. That's what happens in groups. Mm. That doesn't happen in, with, in private sessions. A person can avoid those places eh? mm -hmm. that in a group it shows up it gets mirrored back like if you're avoiding um if you're somebody that's afraid of anger and you're or you're or, or you have a hard time managing intense emotions then you'll avoid that not only in others but you'll avoid that in yourself mm -hmm. now in a group you might witness somebody express intense emotions i'm like oh this is not for me because my strategy is to avoid, but the strategy to avoid is not fostering fulfillment in your life. I'm mean, not you, but you know, I'm using that. No, 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 I'm there. No, I, I did one of your groups. I remember how nervous I was. <laughs> I'm like, let's talk about this. Cause I know it was like, mm, what's this going to be like? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I was so scary when I did my first group. Yeah. But I've experienced so much transformation in those environments. So that's what I, I love doing this. And there's something magical that happens. It's not only the family systems and something, there's a dynamic, a, an energy that gets built up. And then it feels like it, for myself as a channeler, it feels like 
it's lifting me up. It's mm -hmm. lifting the vibration of the channeling so that I can take it to the next level. And so I, the guidance, the clarity of it, the, the medicine in it gets really amplified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to, I mean, you know, sometimes when I do these uh, podcasts, I just hear a question and ask because, you know, someone's listening, whether they're <laughs> listening today or they're listening before. But I remember, you know, even myself, who I consider quite an expansive person, but I'm also a very private person. Right. And uh, I remember the nervousness of going into groups in the very beginning of groups, you know, and mm -hmm. I've been in many groups and many circles and there's that sense of unknown. And because I'm a business person by nature, I always I used to always talk and teach, particularly when we were in business situations. But it's applicable in this way. I'm like the biggest paycheck comes from the highest level of uncomfortableness. And yeah. it was like the payoff. It tends to be high when you walk through that uncomfortable feeling. But mm -hmm. I remember the first group that I went to that I was going to be going deep in. I just knew I was going deep in. I was told it was going to be going deep in. There was no, you know, there was no lying about that. I actually was so nervous. I had a friend drop me off and a friend pick me up because I didn't want to avoid going. <sighs> I, I put that in, in the, so I wouldn't sabotage it. So I wouldn't like not show or I wouldn't, I'm like, pick me up. And if I call you, don't answer, just pick me up. <laughs> and, you know drop me off yeah yeah that's what I did just so I would force myself through that and it was it was a huge breakthrough just going into a group whether I probably got you know I got things right but whether I got what I was supposed to get or not but just the fact that I faced something that I knew was going to move me internally and probably mm -hmm. create some maybe a little bit of sabotage so yeah oh, that, wow that you knew that and you knew what to how to take care of yourself that is just wonderful yeah oh, just little, yeah yeah a little ex saboteur technique there you go anybody um <laughs> i want to so, i want to just in terms of what to expect in groups yeah, like, yeah yeah because we're we're talking from experience but for your for your listeners in terms of like okay but what's this miraculous thing or what's this big transformation that they're talking about it's you know be, i just want to find the words here I think a story, I'm going to share this as a story. I have a client, I hadn't seen her privately. Um, she had just come to my groups and she was kind of like the wallflower. She didn't participate too much. She was very shy. She mostly observed mm -hmm. and worked through her discomforts. And she was, she was kind and, and caring towards everyone, but just private. And I didn't, she hadn't, I hadn't done a group for a while. And she came a few, a, a few months later for a private session. So I was very surprised. Like, oh, I haven't seen you for a while. And she says, Linda, the last group changed my life. Changed her life. She didn't even do a process and it changed her life. Tell me more. And it was witnessing someone else's process. The courage that the other person had to face a deep grief around a death that had occurred in her family. And, and, and she, and just woke her up. She says, I can't, I, I, I can't keep tolerating. It was, she ended up going through a divorce. She went through a huge change of life mm -hmm. because she didn't want to end up not where the other participant went, but, but it was a participant's family member had gone mm -hmm. and all this but it it was the courage what she'd witnessed gave her courage mm -hmm. so everybody processes differently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there's just this magic that happens i'd agree touche linda i know that we're coming to the end of time and i want to make sure that people have an opportunity to reach out and find more dig more learn more see more um, yes, you're part of the 262. Yes, you're going to be on our main stage. Yes, you're going to be in the book. And um, that can be found everywhere. And people can go to my website and they can they can go and find in here and go to the events and all that great, wonderful thing. But can you just share, we're going to have in the show notes, can you share maybe your website or where you want people to kind of reach out to you? Um, and then I have a final question for you that has nothing to do with anything, but has something to do with something. <laughs> A little mischievous here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, my website, lindanardelli.com. Perfect. 
Um, I offer private sessions. I get quite booked up. Mm-hmm. Um, and the work, we go deep. We go deep. I say to people, whatever people do with me, it's not for the faint of heart. Like, this is not just a curiosity. We really go to the heart of core beliefs. We do a lot of reframing, repatterning, rescripting, learning, growing. What I'm super, super excited about right now is my mentorship circle. Um, it, 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 it took me to, a year and a half to finally get put my feet off of the brake and do this. <laughs> I was called to it, but I needed time to prepare. Yeah, it's, it's it's a new environment. I'm stepping into I'm stepping into um, more the mentorship um, because I. Th- I see how teachings, receiving teachings is so relevant to people um, receiving the, the guidance to see and sense more, to see mm-hmm. reality as greater than the familiar that we've adopted. Mm-hmm. And that's a once a month, it's, it's a monthly membership. We mm-hmm. meet once a month. And I'm as excited about that once a month meeting and what's going to naturally transpire as I am with the portal, which is a growing library of content and teachings and guidance to, to um, give people the tools. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a, it's a deep place, but to me, learning is healing. And on a, on an aside, very quick aside, we, the ego mind, the rational, linear thinking ego mind, it's really gets out of the way and becomes in service to the soul when it's learning. Well, the ego loves, loves, loves to learn. Mm. So we just give it. So we give it that mm-hmm. it and it helps us expand. So that's part of why I'm doing this to just help evolve consciousness, waken, and help people live from their hearts. Well, I'm going to ask you one question, and it's a a fun question, but it it means everything. And I love how you talked about it. Your work is your medicine, because for me, music is medicine. And the last question I'm going to ask you is, um, if you were on your way to a desert island and you were taking one suitcase, because that's all you could take, and it was you and you, and what album would you take with you that you could not imagine not listening to for the rest of your days? Just one. Oh, goodness. <laughs> when you ask that, it's a song that comes up in my head. Okay. I, got, well, I would think song? I would bring because a playlist. That song belongs playlist. on an album. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? It's uh, Wonder by, Mich- uh, by uh, Natalie Merchant. Okay. Wonder, because it's so much about... Um, well, she has a, a line in there, the body, la- um, laughter, it's like an angelic being came to me, my body she lifted, um, uh, this child will be gifted, um, and with love and faith, you know, it's like she can do anything. Mm-hmm. And that was a turning point for me in my 20s when I first heard that song, that was my medicine. All right. Um, yeah. Linda, thank you so much for sharing with us today. We know you have so much more and everybody has um, accessibility to you and not only in our project, but everything in terms of the show notes. Listeners, I want to thank you for coming along this with us today. I'm sure you learned more. I absolutely am sure that you are full and you're feeling empowered. And if you yourself feel like you want to share what you do, you want to share your medicine, your magic, your purpose, your passion, then just reach out to us at www.dharman.com and Mission Accepted would love to have you on the show. And with that, thank you so much, Linda, for being with us today. Listeners, you know what to do. Share the show, comment, feedback. We appreciate you. Now you know why you're not only the best audience, but you are also the most mystical. So thank you for being with us today. And until we see you again, stay well and be groovy. Bye for now.